It's tremendously exciting to be part of the Reading Passport Project. It's a chance to uh, get out to towns where I wouldn't normally be. A lot of the events I am usually taking part in are in Bristol and London. So it's nice to get out to places like Yeovil and Gloucester and Bridgewater and meet new readers and uh, hopefully new fans. In the Passport Project, I'm representing science fiction and fantasy which is the area I write in, the area I'm most passionate about. My own personal favourites in the genre are books such as Samuel Delaney's Nova, which was a big influence on me when I was younger. One of my favourite authors, though, is um, Ian Banks, who wrote a lot of books set in a new utopia in the future called The Culture. It's a um, an interlinked series of books, although they're not specifically sequels to each other. Um, and the writing in them is, is so absorbing, it, it, it sort of flies and dances in places, but at the same time, it's got this really brutal um, undercurrent to it. Whereas a lot of writers write about dystopias, he's writing about a utopia, but he also shows the seamier sides of it. My latest book is Hive Monkey from Solaris Books. It's the second part of a trilogy of books featuring a foul-mouthed, drunken, spitfire, flying monkey called Ak Ak Makak. The first part of the trilogy, named after the monkey Ak Ak Makak, won the 2013 BSFA Award for Best Novel of the Year, and I'm kind of hoping this one might repeat the trick. Um, the third part of the trilogy, called Makak Attack, is coming out from Solaris Books um, at the beginning of January 2015, which is only a few weeks away, and we're going to be doing a lot of launch events around the country. We're doing a tour of Forbidden Planet stores in the south of England with a life-size cardboard cutout of the monkey himself, so people can come along, buy the book, and get their photograph taken with a monkey wearing a flying cap and smoking a big cigar. Now that I've written all three books of the monkey trilogy, I'm looking forward to getting back to some good old-school space opera with spaceships, monsters and dashing heroines. I've written a novel, I'm currently working on the sequel, and hopefully there should be some news about those in the next few months. I'm going to read a short extract of Hive Monkey now. Um, as this piece opens, Akak, our monkey hero, is trying to capture his friend Kate, who's been spirited away by some mysterious people in a helicopter. So he's given chase in his elderly Spitfire, but has found himself on the wrong end of a Predator drone, which is trying to track him down. So in order to escape it, he's uh, flying very hard out of Bristol towards Bath, um, along the M4 motorway corridor. To his left, the motorway carved into the hills and he angled his nose in the direction of the cutting. If he could get low enough, he could squeeze under the twin bridges of the junction and emerge on the other side with a barrier between himself and the drone. But it was going to be tight. He couldn't fly up the middle of the road, as lampposts lined the central reservation. He'd have to confine himself to the westbound carriageway. As he powered down towards the tarmac, he realised that the four lanes of the carriageway measured no more than 40 feet, which gave him less than five feet of clearance at each wingtip. But by that point he'd already committed himself. He couldn't pull out, and he couldn't afford the slightest wobble. Unfortunately, he was flying into the teeth of the oncoming traffic. Being early on a Sunday morning, there were thankfully few cars on the road, but as the first bridge rushed at him, he saw a big 18-wheeler bearing down on the junction from the opposite side. There wouldn't be room for both of them under the second bridge, so, unable to manoeuvre, he took the only course open to him. His thumbs mashed down on the firing control, and the plane shook as all eight machine guns cut loose. Bullets hammered the front of the truck, the radiator grille and front bumper flew apart, tyres burst, and the vehicle slewed to the side. Its front fender hit and crumpled against the metal barriers at the edge of the hard shoulder. It was still moving forward, but it was slowing. Akak Makak Spitfire cleared the second bridge and he hauled the stick back into his groin, dragging the nose up. For a second, he thought he wasn't going to make it. The 18-wheeler filled his windscreen. He locked eyes with the terrified trucker at its wheel. And then it was gone, snatched away beneath him and he was airborne, wheeling up into the sky over Wiltshire. Behind him, the drone's second missile hit the side of the first bridge. 
he didn't stop to watch. Instead, he was pulling his plane around in the tightest possible circle, crushing himself into his seat with the G-force, and lining up on the junction again, this time from the other side. As he bore down on the bridges, the underside of his fuselage almost scraped the motorway. Well, he muttered, this has got to be the stupidest bloody thing I've done all day. To have cleared both bridges once was a miracle. To attempt the same feat again was madness. He saw the drone ahead moving uphill towards him, framed by the chalk sides of the cutting. For the moment, he was hidden. The drone's computer couldn't make him out. He was lost in the background noise, obscured by cars and bridges and smoke. He might remain hidden only a few seconds, but, with his opponent exposed and blind, a few seconds were all he needed. The Spitfire boomed under the first bridge, wingtips inches from disaster. The noise of the engine bounced back at him from the concrete overhead, the wind snatched at the hair on his cheeks and threw sparks from the cherry-red tip of his cigar. Grinning, he squeezed the firing control. Eight lines of glittering tracer converged on the drone's bulbous, sensor-packed nose. He flashed into the sunlight, then into shadow again. Passing under the second bridge, he kept the control depressed, knuckles white, pouring everything he had at the oncoming machine. A wild screech ripped from his throat. Die, you sod, die! <laughs>